I wanted to give you guys my quick review of the Canon 5D Mark III. I've had it for a few days now. I've been doing some tests and I'm finding some very interesting things about it. I've been getting a lot of emails asking me whether it's worth the investment over the Canon 5D Mark II or the 7D. The short answer on that is it depends. It depends on what kind of photographer you are. And I need to tell you the features that I'm most impressed with to help you make a decision. Now this is just one man's opinion. You guys don't have to blow up my inbox with all these you know, personal attacks. I'm giving you this advice as if I was telling my very best friend uh, what to do in terms of investing a, a camera. First, let's talk about the things that I, I really like. Number one, the, the most impressive new feature in the camera is its focusing systems. They are vastly improved. In fact, it would be silly to do any kind of test to compare the 5D Mark III with the 5D Mark II. This is like a Pop Warner football team taking on an NFL pro team. It's just no contest. I was particularly happy with shooting at very, very wide apertures. With the 5D Mark II, shooting at 1.2 or 1.4, I often found myself having to revert to live view simply because uh, getting a focus lock at a very uh, wide aperture and then recomposing it would pull the subject out of focus. And so I had to work around this with Live View with not having that problem with a 5D Mark III. The focusing squares also cover more area. So you're, you're not recomposing as much. Now the focusing systems are very complex and I'm going to have to make a separate video about them. Uh, there's, there's a lot of options and a lot of different customizations in there, but holy cow, the focusing systems are phenomenal. The second thing that I was most impressed with was the mid-range high ISO noise. And when I say mid-range high ISO, I'm talking about from 800 to about 3200. Whenever I, I get a new camera, I do some high ISO, high ISO tests and you can check these uh, gear reviews out on my blog. It's at michaelthemaven.com slash gear reviews. But I found some, some very interesting things about the Mark III when shooting JPEG. There are some caveats to these results, so I'll have to kind of discuss that in a separate video, but suffice it to say that the high ISO noise is definitely improved. The third thing that I'm most impressed with is the new monitor. It's very crisp and it's very sharp. We don't have a lot of real estate on the back of our cameras, so when we're inspecting images or we're showing them to a client, this is a really critical, important piece of hardware. The images look awesome. The color sampling in the 5D Mark III is different. It's visibly different than the 5D Mark II. I can't really say which one is better, uh, but I can say that the 5D Mark II tends to favor uh, magentas and reds a little bit more than the 5D Mark III. I love the colors coming out of both cameras, uh, but that one's kind of a toss-up. I, I like the color coming out of the 5D Mark III. It looks really, really good. Whether or not it's better than the 5D Mark II, it's kind of hard to say. If you're a videographer, there are some smaller improvements in the camera that you're really going to appreciate. The first one that we love is the headphone jack on the side of the camera. It's going to allow you to monitor the audio signal coming into the camera. There are also some very interesting time code features that will allow you to sync the time code up between multiple cameras. Another really cool little feature for videographers is the silent control feature. What this means is when you've started recording, you can adjust your exposure settings, your shutter speed, your aperture, your ISO, all by just touching the quick dial. And this is really nice because you're not shaking the camera to move those dials and you're not creating extra noise. There are also some new compression features where you can choose between interframe and intraframe video compression. The Jello in the Moray seem to be a little bit reduced, but other than that, the, the video features from the 5D Mark III are very similar to the 5D Mark II. Now, something you're probably wondering is, what did I not like about the 5D Mark III? The thing that I find <laughs> almost a little irritating was that Canon has moved the zoom buttons away from the top right thumb buttons. They've moved it over to the left side of the camera as its own dedicated button. Not a huge fan of this because even being consciously aware of it, I'm still finding myself tapping those zoom buttons. My advice to you 5D Mark III users is to customize your set button to be the new zoom button and therefore you can still use your right thumb to zoom in and out of the images as well as uh, zooming in on live view, for example. 
Other than that, I don't have very many complaints about the camera. So coming back to this question, is it worth the extra money? I have to answer that based on what kind of photographer you are. If you are a portrait photographer, a wedding photographer who makes half or more of your money with photography and you're shooting more than twice a week, I would say get, you know, make that happen. Save your money. You're going to really love the camera. It's $3,500. I know it's a lot. But when you break that extra cost down over the life cycle of the camera, which is three years, it's going to pay you back several times over. And especially in the focusing, you're, you're not going to have to take as many pictures. You're not going to have to spend so much time in workflow looking for the, the most focused image or even trying to clean it up or sharpen it. So portrait and wedding photographers, I would say try to make it happen if you can. If you are an outdoor sports, wildlife, nature type photographer, the recommendation I'd give to you is to go with the 7D. Its price is around $1,500, $1,600. Sometimes you can find it cheaper with rebates, sometimes maybe a little bit more, just depends on where you get it. But the focusing systems in the 7D are still pretty dang good. And if you're shooting sports or nature outdoors where you have a zoom lens, that cropped uh, sensor is going to give you 1.6 times as much reach. You're going to get slightly faster frames per second where it's eight frames per second. Whereas you're, you're getting just over six with the 5D Mark III. And I think you'd probably want to invest in a, some really high quality glass. I think that would be a better investment if that's your interest. If you are a portrait photographer or a videographer who is working on a budget, my recommendation is to go with the 5D Mark II. The reason why I'm suggesting this is because uh, it's at an all time low. You can get it for about $2,000, give or take. And the 5D Mark II is still a phenomenal camera. Canon is still producing it. The only real drawback with it is, is the focusing systems and that's something you're gonna have to work around. Uh, but for the most part, it's still a great camera. The colors look fantastic. The video is still awesome. And so that's kind of my advice. It depends on what kind of photographer you are and, and what your interests are. But I hope you found that informative in terms of the best features and is it worth the extra cost. I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of feedback from you guys. But in any event, if you found this video helpful, I have a brand new lighting crash course that just came out. I'll teach you all about light, the physics of light, how to manipulate light, as well as how to, how to take great portraits in the studio, outside the studio, as well as products. It's a phenomenal training course, and I hope you check it out at www.michaelthemaven.com. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.